The South African government has said it will extend its Diplomatic Immunity and Privileges Act to all international officials who plan to attend an August summit in the country. The controversial move is being seen as a clear attempt to pave the way for Russia's President Vladimir Putin to travel to South Africa, despite the International Criminal Court issuing a warrant for his arrest in March over alleged war crimes in Ukraine. As a signatory to the ICC, South Africa may be obliged to arrest Mr. Putin if he sets foot in the country, but its government appears to be looking for a way around that obligation. It's understood that Mr. Putin's possible attendance at the summit of leaders from Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa has been a topic of discussion at the highest levels in Cape Town since the arrest warrant was issued. Well, for the very latest, let's speak to Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson, who is in the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, close to the Russian border. Uh, good to see you, John. Let's start with those drone strikes uh, in Moscow, explosions, blasts, plumes of smoke, debris falling to the ground. Assess for us what happened there. Hey, Charles, good to see you. Plenty for us to get our teeth in uh, tonight. This is, uh, in effect, uh, an attack, the first attack on, on civilian targets in, in Moscow, uh, presumably by the Ukrainians, although which branch of the secu uh, Ukrainian government, we, we just don't know. Uh, it was believed by U.S. intelligence that the attack, you'll remember, earlier, earlier this month, on the uh, uh, heart of uh, Moscow, the Kremlin, was carried out possibly by uh, an, an element of the Secret Service in Ukraine, either with Zelensky's permission or not. And, and the, there's the possibility that this latest attack uh, was by the, the same group. Uh, no one knows for sure. Uh, the Russians are keeping things uh, very much close to their chest at the moment, but uh, it's, it was very telling that the strikes were on apartment blocks and neighbourhoods where uh, Putin's cronies live, Charles. Uh, and of course, uh, there's something very uh, symbolic about that because uh, I, I, I'm sure there are uh, supporters of Putin, people close to him in his inner circle who are telling Putin, look, uh, you've been doing this for more than a year now, get on with, get on with the job and uh, properly invade Ukraine and get it over with. I, I, I don't know, but uh, that, that, that's a possibility. Uh, and you can bet your bottom dollar uh, tonight, Charles, that the Russians are pouring over the remnants of, uh, of the drones to try to locate the source. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure the, the Kremlin would like to point the finger at a, at a NATO country, although I have to say that some of these drones you can buy on the open black market uh, uh, anywhere in the world. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what the Russians come up with on that. But it, it's a very dangerous move. You intimated that uh, in, in the intro to this segment, and I, I, I agree with that. Uh, things like this can very easily uh, get out of control. Um, either a sensitive uh, uh, target is, is, is hit in Kiev or in Moscow, and, and a lot of people die. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing that can really uh, lead to a, a, a big conflagration of, uh, of, of these two, two warring sides. And there's a lot of nervousness uh, in uh, NATO member capitals tonight about this, uh, about this development. And uh, John, these blasts in Moscow follow a third wave of strikes on the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, and I believe other cities. Uh, another night, another round of attacks. What, what's the latest on, on those? Yes, I, I was in uh, Kiev over, over the weekend and uh, going through what uh, the Ukrainian people go through almost on a nightly basis. It was the 15th, 16th and 17th attack this month in, in Kiev. And it's very strange, Charles, this, this new method of warfare. When these swarms come over of drones, it's like a, the sound is like a, 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 a gang of motorbike riders coming through, across the sky. It's the most strange noise. Uh, as I say, it sounds like a, a motorcycle out of control or several motorcycles out of control. And uh, uh, you, you look up at the skies and the, 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 the vapor trails in the sky and, and then you see the rockets going up to uh, take them out. Uh, that 
what I saw in uh, Kiev today in Kharkiv. Uh, uh, there were sirens playing. I think we can hear those. And I mean, uh, John, that, that's obviously Kharkiv where you are, but we've seen these repeated intensifying attacks on Kiev. I mean, what impact is it having on the city's residents as well as on, on people where you are? Well, um, in, in Kharkiv, they've been enduring this for uh, uh, more than a year now, Charles, and today we had uh, five or six uh, air raid sirens like the one you just heard. and. A lot of the population now tend to ignore them. Uh, maybe 40% disappear into bunkers and, and go into sh underground shelters. And there's, there's one in the hotel that I'm at. Uh, but to, uh, generally speaking, the vast majority of uh, uh, Kharkiv residents, uh, I perceive with my eyes, actually get on with their lives and they, they stay in their offices, but a, a, a very substantial proportion of them do head to the shelters. And of course, it's all very wearing to, to go through, through this four or five times a day, week in, month in, month out. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the impact that it has on, on, the, on the local population is, is, is absolutely huge. Uh, and there are care agencies operating in this city uh, that uh, are starting to look after families and finding the strain uh, just a little bit too much, especially the children. Uh, you can imagine, uh, you know, kids four, five, six years old. What are they making of all of this? It, it, the, the, these are experiences that will not only scar them now, but they'll live with these moments, these, these, this feeling of fear uh, for the rest of their lives. Of course, this is what Putin wants. Uh, that's what this campaign is, is about. It's is to sap the morale of the population. The Ukrainians are starting to do the same, perhaps in Moscow now. We don't know, and we don't even know if the Ukrainians were indeed responsible for t uh, today's uh, drone attacks in Moscow. But you can see a, a, a pattern emerging, and uh, also the Russians want to uh, destroy some of the defences. Uh, that uh, the Ukrainians have built up uh, in, in the recent months before this an anticipated big counteroffensive that the Ukrainians are apparently planning. John, thanks very much indeed, and stay safe. John Cookson, a rise chief correspondent, uh, talking to me there from the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, close to the Russian border.